But a lot of issues have been addressed up here this morning. Mental health. Huge. Huge. The Bible said, let this mind be in you. Let, allow, which is also in Christ Jesus. It's hard to do because in the Garden of Gethsemane, his sweat became as great drops of blood under pressure. Stress, he was a man. Identity. Anybody hear the word identity? Young people today, listen to me. You've got to have an identity. You've got to know who you are and you've got to know who you are in Jesus Christ. Because if you don't know who you are in Him and through Him, I don't know where I'm going to preach. i got some a message here, but I'm going to mind the Lord. Because it, preaching's really been done. If you don't know who you are in Jesus Christ this morning, you don't know who you are. If you don't have an identity of a born-again Christian, listen to me this morning, you're dangling out over hell by a thread. Uh, the devil's got you just swinging you around uh, just in limbo. I tell you, a dangerous place to be is searching for your identity, searching for who you are or who you want to be. Questioning, Denise, if you're a boy or a girl, a man or a woman, in the world we live in today, that's going to be the, the identity crisis. I'll tell you how to figure that one out real easy. Go look at your birth certificate. That'll settle that. We, we better... Moms and dads, we better get these babies under the Word of God. Uh, I know we run a hundred miles to keep an older, older person or a loved one out of heaven. But I don't know but what it ain't time. That Doug, we get in the trenches and get in the battle for the Lord. To save the young ones out of hell. Amen. They're confused. Doug, they don't know who they are. They're searching for answers. Amen. And we got them. We got them. Seth's got it right here. Alan's got one right here. You can take what this little fellow right here knows, what he's learned in church, just about Jesus. Put him on a platform somewhere. Just let him tell people about what Jesus done on the cross. You know that story? You know what they done with him? They, they put him in a grave, right? The devil thought he had him. <laughs> thought he won. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! Thought the battle was over, but guess what? Amen. On the third day, remember that. Give me a three. I don't know whether to do it like that or that. Either way, we can do it like that if we want to. Third day, guess what? Stone rolled away. Jesus walked out and the church became victorious. Hallelujah. That's my identity. Denise, that's who I am today, is a believer in that. Amen. It's not that complicated. It's not that hard. I, they asked me earlier, just... Kidding around how long I was going to preach. I said, I don't know. I've got about an hour long message, but I don't feel like I'm going to get to do that today. But listen to me. We better get right with God. Michael, we could take this little number right here. It's a pretty good number. First church was 120. 120 in the book of Acts. Fired up. Fired up, Denise, filled with the Holy Ghost. They walk, they walk by a sick man, their shadow would pass over him. I'm talking about a man that was laying there near death, Julie, ready to die. Their shadow. See my shadow? When that shadow of the Holy Ghost went over them, all of a sudden they were healed. What is that? That's the Holy Ghost. That's the power of God. Is that real still today? Praise God. I'm shaking all over. 
my legs are shaking. They're not weak. I've been in the basement running and singing as loud as I can sing, getting in preaching shape. <laughs> it's the only way I know to exercise to preach. Listen to me. There's a lot on the line. Right now, today, John 2021, February is always a hard month. My family, death has hit my family in February. February's a hard month to get through. Just be a good month for the church if we sell out to God in February. How many of you, how many of you would like to sell out to God? It would be honest, raise your hand and say, I'd like to sell out. Boy, that's a big, that's a big commitment. If you're going to raise it, raise it high. Half mass means somebody died and Get it up there. That ain't going to be easy. Seth, we're going to have to get in the trenches and we're going to have to stand for some things that it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to address. Real problems. Real problems. Michael, there's real problems out here. Did you know that? You parents, if you got kids, these young people back here filled a whole row. You know what they're looking for this morning? Identity. You know what they deal with every day? Real problems. You know where the answer is? Through Jesus Christ. Amen. What he done on the cross, Sandy, that fixed it all. Listen, I lived a hard life. Megan, I run myself through the gutter. I, but guess what? You don't have to do that. And it's harder today. Seth, it's harder today. It's harder, it's harder to be a preacher today. It's harder to be a Christian today. You know what, Denise? We may come in here one morning and the sheriff deputies be sitting out there. I don't, I don't think they're going to come try to... Matt, they're not going to come try to take our guns. They don't want our guns. What do they want our guns for? I ain't worried about that, Shannon. They probably won't come take our Bibles. They probably won't do that because we can hide the Word in our heart. If in nothing else, how many of you know John 3.16? We'll come in here and just quote that over and over and have a big old time. But i tell you what they're going to do. They're going to turn the real preaching and the real stance for God into hate. When we stand for our young people, and that's on my heart this morning about to kill me, when we stand for our young people and we get up and we tell the truth and we shout the warnings from the book of God, amen, from Romans chapter number 1, when we shout that from the pulpit as loud as we can shout it and we stand on that with a firm foundation, somebody's going to come and say that's a hate crime. Hate crime or not. Honey, the devil's got his talons stuck in our young people and in our nation. Our nation is as corrupt right now at this very moment as it's ever been in history. It's perverted. It's nasty. It's wide open for whatever you want. Danny, there's one option for the church, and that's stand. I've got a good message here in the book of Exodus I was really excited about. But my heart felt like it was going to fall out of my chest sitting right here a while ago. How many of you know somebody this morning that's struggling with identity? Can, can, can we pray this morning? Can, can the church come? And let's put... Let's put the routine, let's put the singers sing for 15 minutes and the preacher sings for 30. Let's put the send a, let's just cast that out the door. You know somebody that's dealing with mental issues this morning, that, that's struggling with depression and oppression? Do you know somebody that's doing that? Why don't we pray this morning? Why don't we pray? You know somebody that, that's in rebellion this morning? Why don't we pray? It'd be a good morning, Michael, for us just to hit the altar. Whether we prayed about it yesterday, it doesn't matter. Mm, hallelujah. The Bible said where two or three are gathered in his name. Guess what he said? He said, I will be there. Right in the midst. You know what mist means? Slap dab in the middle.
I think it'd be a good morning to pray. Probably be, Danny, probably be good just to come in here before every service, in the middle of the service, whatever, just just bust that altar wide open. You won't see lives change. You won't see uh, our homes change. I mean, we, we can't start with the world till we start with our homes. Joe, you can't start with your house till you start with Joe. Let's start right there this morning. Y'all don't have to come with a song. You can, you can pray where you at, come to the altar, whatever you want to do, but everybody stand to their feet this morning. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to open this altar. We're going to open the, the pews, whatever you need to do. But you pray if y'all, y'all want to bring you up and see whatever you want to do. Y'all to pray.
You heard Megan a while ago talking about they can't get that big party started until we get there. How many of you know what she's talking about? Anybody? My favorite time of day is supper time. Me and Kelly can talk at 8 o'clock in the morning, and sometimes I'll say, what's for supper? Yeah. <laughs> well, one of these days, when that trumpet sounds, we're going home. There's going to be a supper called the marriage supper. Right here's the best part of the lamb. Now the lamb's not the dish. He's the host. Hallelujah. He's the reason that we're going there. Hallelujah. I hope everybody here out of this number because of John 3 16 just hang on to that you'll be all right that's how you'll get there and we went over to Harley's one night and we had a Eric, you, you, you mentioned that the youth were on your mind today. Um, and that I mentioned once before when we sung this song that this was a prayer that we prayed over our youth at the previous church that we were at. And I don't know why, but this morning, I mean, I, I got to spend a little time with Daniel yesterday, and he was talking about a kid in his class um, who was confused, like you were talking about. It's easy to get confused as a kid because you've got it coming from so many different directions. Right. And, um, you know, for us, we were really rooted and grounded because we were homeschooled. Mom and Dad taught us with a Christian education. So we were based on Bible. Then we got to church and based on Bible. Our friends were based on Bible. Still pulled us a lot mm -hmm. regardless of having that covering and that protection. Um, we still had things that pulled us because some of our friends, once they started getting jobs, then we started getting jobs. And uh, you guys got it a lot harder than we had it, a whole lot, especially as teenagers. Um, they're going to be fighting a whole lot more than I ever thought about fighting as a kid. Um, and I know we're trying to social distance and we're trying to keep some space, you know, and, and everybody's trying to keep protected. So could we as a church spread out leave the young people in the middle and everybody get on the outside and as we sing this song let's pray this blessing over these children let's pray this blessing over all the children that are in our church that that this will go with them that 
We're praying over them so that God keeps them and he protects them. No matter what they're facing, no matter what they're going through, that he is there with them. We know this and that they will rely on him for whatever decision it is that they're trying to make. I just, I really feel strongly about that this morning. You ain't got to touch somebody. Just get on the outskirts as far as you can get. The devil wants to see how these kids, if the kids, you kids stay in your seat. The young people stay in your seat. But there's what the devil's seen this morning. He's worried about these old people. He's targeting these just by themselves. Listen, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. But whatever they hear, that's what they believe. Lord, we love you. God, we pray this morning. We love our young people. Help us pray, Lord, in Jesus. Lord, that you would put an end to around us, God. in your spirit, God, nothing else but the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Lift up a standard against me, God. Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus. God, we plead what you've done on the cross. God, over our babies, God, and most of all, Lord, we plead, God, in your spirit, God, to come on. God, if they're wrong, God, I pray you convict them, God, and save them. Now, Lord, that's the main thing, God, if they get born again, and then, Lord, I pray that your spirit that would make them hungry and thirsty for the word of God. God, Lord, I pray you give us guidance.
when you go and you sit down in somewhere by yourself, Alan, you feel like you're beat down and you're trying to pray. If we could just see through spiritual eyes, like that prophet, he asked God to show him all the angels that was around him. We're surrounded right now by angels. Some of you might think, preacher, you're crazy. That's Bible. I never forget, I, we're going home right now in a minute. How many of you would believe Kelly if she told you something? Raise your hand if you think she's pretty honest. I can say, as far as I know, she never really lied to me. That's a pretty big statement. A lot of, most of you men can't say that about your wife. 
When we first started coming here, Hallelujah. You glad to come to church today? Well, I'm glad I've come. Lord willing, we'll have it next Sunday at 11 o'clock. We'll just press on and do the best we can. That's all we can do, right? If your heart's clear, you can fellowship, you'll be at liberty to go.